significance of material selection and design. Um, so, so just to quickly recap, I mentioned that anytime that you design a product or a component, the first thing that comes to mind is how is the product supposed to work? What is the purpose of the product? And what are the performance parameters that governs the product? We've got a picture of an impeller. And this impeller um, is used to amplify the pressure in displacing fluid from one point to the other. In terms of how it functions, it needs to rotate at a defined speed to enable it increase the pressure in moving um, or displacing fluid. As a result, the material will be subjected to a considerable amount of stresses due to the centrifugal force generated by uh, the component uh, rotation. You also have this situation where you have uh, fluids making contact with the component. What is uh, the nature of the fluid? Is the interaction of the fluid going to cause the component to degrade? These are some of the things that need to be um, thought of when it comes to selecting material. So the material that you select is kind of uh, the physical embodiment of what the function and performance parameters need to be. So we talked about the material, um, the component rotated, which will cause it to generate significant amounts of forces. Thus, you need a material that's able to withstand considerable stresses in terms of the component to cause the component not to fail and also to cause the component not to deform out of shape. The T strength becomes very important because again, depending on the speed of, um, of the component in terms of how it, it travels, it will vary you know, uh, the stress level due to the interaction between the component and the fluid. Thus, having an understanding of a material that has high fatigue strength is very important so that you have an idea in terms of what um, its endurance is in terms of its uh, operational life in terms of uh, cycles. Resistance to degradation, so again, dependent on the environment, you know, and uh, the chemical characteristics of the fluid, is the component likely to degrade? So the material needs to exhibit such quality to ensure that the component does not degrade over time. But there's also another uh, dimension to this. The material that you select for any component has a bearing on its manufacturability. So the manufacturing process required to, you know, manipulate the material from its primary uh, supply form to the finished product needs to be considered and that will be dictated by the material that you choose. So you also need to look at other mechanical characteristics relating to uh, the machinability of the material. So excellent machinability will be something that needs to be considered because that will tell you what are the subtractive uh, manufacturing processes out there for the material to be, you know, um, formed to shape. So whether that is via milling, via uh, turning, a combination of, uh, whether the intricacy that intricacies of um, the component requires uh, multi-dimensional uh, machining so whether it's five axes you know uh, four axes three axes all of these things will come into play good formability so this is the material's ability to be you know quite malleable to deform into yielding the desired uh, shape of the component so forging is something that comes into mind and there are different types of forging processes out there Good castability is also important and low BDGT. So that is a failure mode where you've got a, you know, a ductile pot, uh, 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 material transitioning into uh, a brittle uh, failure due to the transition in its um, operational temperature. So there is a temperature point. If the material gets to that point, then it will transition particularly uh, if the material used is quite ductile so when it comes to the manufacturing these are some of the things that you know the materials will influence in terms of the process that you will uh, are required to select for the, a given component so what is the manufacturing's process or process capability of achieving the near form of um, the component what about the embedded energy requirements so how much energy is required to yield this form Economy of manufacture. So if you need to manufacture a bespoke or a one-off, 
you need to manufacture in batches from a batch starts from 10 up to about a thousand anything beyond a thousand goes into medium high volume manufacturing so what are the cost implications of that not just regarding the part that needs to be manufactured but also the amount of uh, how much it will cost to run and maintain the machinery to enable uh, these parts to be produced form and shape complexity how complex um, the form is you know needs to be taken into account so it shouldn't just be about aesthetics aesthetics aesthetic what are the complications of you know shape complexity when it comes to manufacturing so the more complicated the form is the greater the, uh, the uh, sequence of um, processes required to yield um, the net form and on top of that the higher the cost it will require in making the part so these are some of the factors that you do need to bear in mind when you are selecting materials uh, for um, a product or component This is more or less a summary of what I've just talked about. So again, when it comes to you know considering materials, uh, the first bit is to have a good understanding of uh, what the functional requirements of the products or the component is. So what is the purpose? What is it supposed to do? What are the performance parameters? You know, in terms of how much strength um, the co uh, the product needs requires to uh, yield or realize intended function. What about you know its performance against you know changes and transitions in temperature? These are some of the things that need to be outlined very clearly to support you in identifying what are the key material requirements in selected uh, the ideal material to complement um, the component in terms of how it needs to uh, perform. Other things like operational and service requirements are important. And another thing you also may want to factor in is the material's ability to be recovered and this is where the sustainability element comes into play then you move on to look at the material requirements so once you have an understanding of the functional requirements of the product you can then look at you know what are the requirements in terms of the material and how that complements the functional requirements so physical um, properties like dimensional stability is quite important because if dimension the dimension of a part is critical in terms of how it needs to uh, function then you may want to look at material that can retain its dimension over time density tends to relate to how heavy or how light um, a material is so when it comes to looking at uh, reducing material by increasing uh, strength or you know reducing material to safeguard the amount of work coming out of the device then density becomes a very important factor to consider when selecting material. You've also got mechanical properties. So mechanical properties will look at things like strength, stiffness, fatigue, life, uh, fracture toughness. And it also goes beyond that to look at the mechanical properties when it comes to uh, component manufacturability. So castability, formability, things like that. Um, thermal um, parameters or thermal properties. So specific heat capacity, you know, how much heat can uh, a component retain over time? If that's relevant to the function that you may want to look at such properties. Um, melting point, so if the product is operating in an environment that's, let's say, a thousand degrees C and, be and beyond, can the component operate within that environment without melting or, you know, transitioning from its solid form to its liquid state? These are things that need to be considered. If you're also thinking about the component being able to transfer uh, heat from one point to the other, then thermal conductivity is something that you need to think of. Again, the opposite is um, thermal uh, insulation. Uh, environmental property. So here, this is where uh, recyclability comes into play. So how recyclable is the material? But it goes beyond that. And that's part of the reason why when you're doing some uh, material selection, you also need to uh, perform an equal assessment because not all material are uh, recoverable or renewable. So these are some of the things that you may want to think about. There used to be a situation in the past where uh, wood as a natural resource was deemed to be uh, renewable uh, material, but that's not truly really the case because it does take a long while for uh, trees to you know, germinate and yield the type of uh, material 
uh, to go into the, the primary street. So we have to be very careful of this. You know, all materials do not have infinite uh, in terms of the, the, the resources is infinite. So you may want to factor that. And when it comes to um, the manufacturing processes, these are some of the things that you may want to think about in terms of um, the material. So how proficient is the process to you know yield the intended shape or form? What about uh, you know geometric complexity? Is the process able to you know yield that? What about variances in the sectional thickness of um, the material and the component? Would the process be able to you know achieve you know the desired thickness when it comes to you know applying such processes? Net form capability is very important because what you're trying to do to enable you reduce. Um, the cost in terms of manufacture is to focus on primary or secondary processes that are able to achieve um, 80, at least 80% of the form of the component so that it reduces the chain of manufacturing sequences required. Labor intensity is also important. So again, um, it comes a bit back to this net, um, net shape capability. The more labor intensive a process is, the higher the cost. So if you are thinking about you know, manufacturing a part using automated or semi-automated uh, manufacturing uh, capabilities, then you may want to look at how that eliminates you know, the amount of human uh, labor that's required for the process. Energy intensity, that will be dictated by you know, the material property to you know, deform. So the more malleable the material, the lower the energy um, requirement. Production output, so that'll be governed by, you know, the amount or quantity of materials that you intend to uh, produce. So whether you're looking at manufacturing a unit, 10 units, a thousand, a million, 10 million, that will be defined by the material and the processes required. And the other factors that also come into play like uh, component tolerance, you know, how accurate can the process, you know, achieve those tolerance as specified by your design. Surface roughness is also important because not all processes are able to achieve the intended surface refinement. So again, something that you may want to look at in terms of the material because not all material are able to provide the needed surface uh, smoothness or roughness as intended. So when it comes to um, design, materials, as I would say, is king because it detects everything. As I stated, material is more or less the physical embodiment of how the product is supposed to function and perform. And it also dictates the manufacturing processes required to achieve uh, you know, the, the design intent based on the geometric profile of um, the design component. Bye, bye, bye.